A whole lot of you wanted me to talk about war, let and const keywords that are there in JavaScript. Surely they should be discussed at the very first, but there is a reason, very specific reason I didn't want to do that at the very first. I surely could have said some gibberish word. You could have said, yes, it's okay, that's super easy to do. But you wouldn't have understood why after so many years we got in need of introducing this let keyword. Things were all good with the war and in fact you write any of your code with the war keyword. It's all great, it's all fine. It's, so why there is a need of let keyword? Because after some of the years of the development of JavaScript, it was, it was getting used at the places where it was never designed to be, especially in the backend part. In the front end part, we need a language which is much more lenient. We don't want to throw up error at the very second place where you're writing the code. That's why war keyword was designed with such a leniency that it doesn't give much of the error. It just throws you undefined at the place where you probably will get error. And that's the reason for so many years it was not there, the let keyword. But eventually, after some time, JavaScript was getting used at the places where it was never designed to be used or like entire mobile application, entire backend routing and a whole bunch of other places. In those places, it's always good to have errors. And this for years has been a problem in JavaScript, the scope. How JavaScript considers scope and how other languages consider scope, there is a vast majority of difference here. And now you're in a position that you understand what is this global execution context, how the executional context mounts up and they go away and all of these things. So, and we also studied a little bit about how one guy comes up and picks up all the variable names and all the functions, definition and stuff like that. So yes, I would agree here that for years, we have this scope issue in JavaScript. And there is a solid problem here that you need to understand. Majority of the programming language call this as a scope. This is right now an empty scope, but anything that has these curly braces are called a scope. Scope are there in your if and else, they are there in your for loops and probably dozens of other places. But JavaScript don't consider this as a scope. For JavaScript, things are a bit different. JavaScript consider functions as a scope. As long as function is there, uh, things are all okay and things are gonna work fine. And on top of that, there are some uh, global context which pick up your variable that also makes things really, really bad for some special cases, not for the front end. So we need to understand that how this let keyword can save your life and I would recommend that if you're writing code, especially for backend and more sensitive place, then you should actually use a let keyword. So let's finally formally discuss that one. So I have got this new file here, uh, which is in 206 advanced ish. This is a section which I don't consider as much advanced. Less code is going to be there in this section, but concepts are a bit new and you're going to have more advanced-ish topics. So that's why I named it like that. So uh, there are some things that we have seen already in the past. So uh, let's just go ahead and say that I'm going to use a war keyword for first here. And I'm going to define my name here. There we go. We have seen this so many times in the past. Now, I think you can answer this question that what happens when I try to do this? I'm trying to print my name and I'm trying to print it before it was initialized and declared as well. We have seen that this actually gives us a result of undefined. And I think if you have watched the previous video, you have already seen that this is undefined. Undefined is good for front end. It doesn't really block your code. It doesn't really gives you error. But in the case of backend, I need error. I want error here. So in that case, if you can replace this war with the new keyword in the JavaScript let, it actually gives you an error and a lot of you might think that error is not a good thing, but error is actually a good thing uh, compared to undefined and compared to many other things. So that's the one use case scenario of this lad. But let's go ahead and uh, go back onto the war to understand more on this one. Now coming up onto the scope, let's go ahead and declare a simple dummy scope. I'm going to call this true so that we always go inside it. And notice here these curly braces. This is considered as a scope. So in many of the cases, let's just say I get a last name and I define the last name something like this, a really big, and I try to print that. So let's go ahead and have a log of last name. What do you think is gonna be the result in this case? I can actually comment this out because we have understood this part as of now. Now let's go ahead and run this one here. We get the 
uh, my last name up here, that's okay, that's fine. We have seen this kind of code. What happens if I move this code outside this block here? Now, this is my scope and uh, technically this is not scope in JavaScript because this is not a method. So what is going to happen in this case? If I go ahead and run this again, I'm still able to print out my last name. To a lot of programmer, this is not really a good thing. Uh, what the habit we have developed is variable which are declared inside the scope should just go away and should not be accessible to me outside here. And you might have seen this kind of same pattern uh, that when we go ahead and declare a simple for loop, notice by default, the syntax that is given to me is let, not the var, because it can actually make some of the trouble. When you declare it with the let, the scope or the variable actually is poof, is gone away as soon as this block is over. That's why in the loops, we majorly use let keyword because let's just say you write another for loop, you're gonna again, there are high chances that you use the same name here. But if the name is war, and imagine what happened here, this last name was available to me even after the scope was over. So this in these particular situation can actually mess around your code a lot. Your initialization can go all wonky here. Now, what is the solution of this one here? All you have to do is replace this war keyword with the let. Now let's go ahead and save this and try to run this one here. Now JavaScript is behaving how you like it to behave. It's not allowing you to access this variable once this scope is over. Once the scope is over, that's it. So now I hope you can imagine how neatly this thing was, uh, was done in the JavaScript architecture that if anybody wants to go with the classic way of thinking that scope is all like a global context and executional context and functional way, then he can use the war keyword and can still continue use the language how he has learned, but all for the new programmer who are using the language as the backend can just replace one keyword war to let and now can consider this language as almost all modern languages like C++ or Go or Swift where scope is defined with the curly braces. So that's a very, very fantastic. And I would say honestly, very, very wise approach of handling this situation. And this much of in-depth analysis is not at all possible on the day one when I'm teaching the JavaScript. So that's why I kept it at the very end. And now you thoroughly and in-depthly understand of that. So all the tricky question that comes up in the interview where uh, interviewers sneakily add these let and war and try to mix them up. Now you know what is happening and how things are happening. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this in-depth behind the scene analysis of war, let keyword and memory scope. So I think you can now hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done that. That's it for this one and let's catch up in the next one.